this is this uh, presentation a case study really one successful reaction to the whole online pivot um so i'll try and explain what we did i will talk about the data that we used to suggest that it was successful uh, and you can challenge us on that in the chat box if you wish and that's the team two people from university of westminster who were leading this activity in their particular school doug specht and gunter saunders and they dragged in myself and peter chaston as external consultants who would hopefully help us plan uh, a wonderful time uh, and we'll now move on to the context and that's the university of westminster that's the school of media and communication perhaps the most interesting thing is the technology at the bottom fairly typical range of technology using the vle electronic reading lists panopto for recording of lectures and a, a new version of blackboard uh, but staff confidence in the technology was generally low and that mirrors this kind of uh, statistic, this rather worrying statistic we found from JISC. So this was pre-pandemic, uh, pre, uh, and we wonder how much that has changed. It certainly changed for the staff that we were working with. And I wonder if JISC will try and rework that. There are two papers that came out that I can refer you to, and anybody who wants these slides and wants to pick up the links, please just drop me a line. There was a worry about early adopters, and I'll say a bit about that in a minute. And the paper at the bottom is the survey of all we did and lots more results. And so you can look at some of the detail uh, if you follow that. This is the model we kept coming up with when we decided to, well, what's the model of change that we could work to? And we kept coming across this again and again and again. It's so prominent and we think it's had its day because it focuses you on the innovators and the early adopters with this notion that they will mystically transform the world. We don't think they will. We're particularly worried about the use of innovators. Uh, and we, myself and the other Peter, were very much the critical friends who came in from outside, not as experts, but as critical friends. And one general worry we had was how do we manage student expectations? How do we get across student expectations? So the key feature of the approach was, first of all, let's try and generate a feeling of all in it together. Let's try and generate all the staff together to try and work through what we're going to do. Early adopters, supporters and cheerleaders and a focus on core technology and that uh, links to some of the points that have been made earlier. So all in it together was a really critical part of the whole philosophy. Curriculum design led the agenda. Whenever people started talking about technology, we tried to work it back to curriculum design. What do you actually want to do? And there was, there was targeted support to support the technology. And again, down that bottom of the page, there the importance of dialogue. The chat box was really critical. That was the, the map of action. And this reflects the idea that there was very much emergency. Let's get the emergency out of the way. Let's get everybody online first. And then let's take a bit of a pause to say, well, actually, let's start planning. And there are really two phases to the, to the next stage to try and get people on board. But what did everybody else do? If you look at that uh, version of JPAAP, you'll find a whole set of case studies and a whole set of questions. In fact, this could be a next, uh, next uh, session for LSIG. Answer those questions. How do we use early adopters? How do we need champions? We didn't do that, but we found a lot of really successful statistics. So this is from a student point of view. Did they feel engaged? Yes, they did. And that statistic was far above the statistic we got from a wonky survey, because there were a load of surveys that came out at this time. Uh, when we came across uh, and asked the staff, and what, there, there's the staff statistics. Again, the staff's statistics were far superior to ones that we were looking out from some other, some other surveys. Um, and what also helped us in terms of trying to work out what was happening and whether it was successful or not, is we used the JISC digital survey uh, and again, we, we managed to get that to apply to both staff and students. And that gave us a whole range of comparisons, which gave us the staff views, comparisons within the institution and comparisons with the national survey. And I'm asking myself, why isn't this slide moving on? Um, it is. Um, so there was the student feedback. And again, a lot focusing on that, except that the digital learning one of the things we noticed was that there was a different pattern of interaction in this school as compared to some of the national averages. Lots more live online teaching, lots more online discussion with tutors. And we wonder whether that was perhaps the most significant 
feature that came out of it. So we started thinking about what were our immediate post-project thoughts, that the stick of the pandemic, it can work if you support people. Let's focus on core technology. Let's stop reinventing the wheel and particularly focus on future proofing. A lot of our discussion was about not just emergency, but let's make it suitable for the future. And the longer term outcomes, and this is from conversations with Doug this week, there's been a significant increase in updates, revisions to modules. So in other words, people are now talking about learning and teaching in a way they didn't do before. They're trying to change their modules in a way that they didn't do before. And even the most cynical professor is describing it as transformative. So my big questions in terms of winding this up and saying, well, what's some of the implications of this? Can we avoid the Bobby Ewing syndrome? And if you've not heard of that, then read the blog post by Sheila McNeil. We can't forget that history has happened. We can't suddenly go back to the traditional old ways. And another thought I've had for future research really generating out of that is what the students feel. How, where do they get their impressions of e-learning from? Is online inferior? That was a big headline in the BBC from a lot of BBC and a lot of other media. Should we be using laptops? That study on the right there has become quoted time and time again, and it's wrong, as this study can show. And one of the things that I think that Ellisic could do is start teasing out some of these myths and fantasies which surround us. And that's it. That's my first Pecha Kucha. Well done. I survived. <laughs>